Shalom, shalom. Back today for another lesson. And uh, today I'm going to be rebuking a, another false prophet with false doctrine. I'm going to break it down with the correct breakdowns according to the Bible, according to the Holy Scriptures. And uh, I'm going to give you guys plenty of jewels from the old, new, and from the Apocrypha. And the main topic of this video, uh, the, the pastor here who calls himself, he goes by the name of Prophet Brian Karn. He is, uh, he made a video talking about how um, you're not going to go to hell for sinning. Okay, now we know that hell is a condition played out on earth. Okay, uh, hell is going to be brought on through Jacob's trouble and also through the lake of fire, which is going to come when the nuclear missiles hit America, the daughter of Babylon. Okay, but um, we also know that if you do not have the mark of salvation that the angels give you, this is spoken of in Ezekiel chapter 9, that you are not going to be saved from the wrath of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Well, actually, before I play this video, we give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of what people hear or forbear. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and I'll play this, this uh, short video clip. It's only about two minutes long, and then I'll bring out some scriptures. Hope you guys enjoy. Again, I'm viral. I'm used to it. That's what you all do to me. Take excerpts out of the message without clarity. I'm going to say something folk won't say. You, you, you can go to hell, but it can't be for sin. Because Jesus paid the price for sin. But let me help you understand it, and hopefully you can get it. And come on over here under the new covenant law, new covenant grace. A Muslim, a Buddhist. Okay, first of all, we not. In, I had to pause the video for this. First of all, we're not in the new covenant yet. Okay, it tells us in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 11, and in the new covenant, the laws will be written in our hearts and in our minds, so we're not going to be able to go off. We're not going to be able to sin. Also, part of the new covenant is having new perfect bodies. It tells you, I forgot exactly where, but it says that we shall not all sleep, but in an instant we shall be changed. Okay, that's all part of the new covenant. So, you know, we're not a part, we're not part of the new covenant yet. It has not happened. It's going to happen when the Lord returns and he delivers the elect from the wrath of the Heavenly Father. Okay, so I had to pause the video just to say that. Let me go ahead and press play. Who doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't lie, cheat, or steal. Doesn't dip, cuss at you, or hang with them to do. If he dies, where's that Muslim going? We believe you're going to hell. Why? Because you didn't accept Jesus. None of their works make them righteous. Well, if none of your works make you righteous, none of your works make you unrighteous. I am righteous because of what Jesus did. Jesus went to Calvary and said, it is finished. He paid the bill. He paid the tab. The sin issue is dealt with. You are not going to heaven because you don't accept Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth. And he's the light. Now, again, it's very hard for some of you who say, well, I don't believe that. But you have to believe it because you sin. Yeah, you lie. You cheat. You steal. You gossip. You back, back. Matter of fact, you just in somebody's comments talking about me. So I know you believe. That your works don't make you go to hell Because according to your work of gossip That's what you should be In hell But thank God for grace I've been okay. Again uh, I'm vowing I'm clear. used to it um, So uh, I have multiple scriptures I'm going to bring out To break down this This uh, false doctrine One thing that a lot of times you see um, A lot of Christian um, pastors They say They say well The work of the Lord has been finished Yes, the atonement has been finished, okay? But, <clears throat> which we're going to get later on, it tells you in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, that if you willfully sin after the, after the receiving the knowledge of the truth, that there remain no more sacrifice for your sins. So, with that being said, with that being said, um, so lock you bear with me. Okay, so with that being said, um, so with that being said to lock I apologize with that being said um, once again if you sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice 
for your sins. Okay. So, what that tells you is that... <clears throat> so, like, I apologize. I got distracted. Uh, what that tells you is that once you receive... The, exactly as it says. Once you receive the knowledge, you can't continue living in sin. If you do, then that it is, it is as if the atonement never happened for you. Okay. So, and we're going to read that. We're going to read that uh, a little bit later. I'm going to bring out some other scriptures first. We're going to break down this false doctrine. So, first... We're going to go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 13. Okay. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 13. And this, this uh, specifically talks about false prophets that do this. Okay. They don't warn the wicked of their wicked ways and what it, what it leads to. Okay. It leads to death and destruction. And it's going to lead to you being caught up in the judgment of the Heavenly Father. So we're going to get that right quick. So, uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to start Ezekiel chapter 13. And I'll start at... Okay. I'll start at verse 3. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. So it's saying they, they prophesy after their own heart. Okay, And it's also saying that they have not built up the children of Israel to stand in the day of the battle of the Lord. Because that's what's coming. All the prophecies of the Bible lead to that. And when you have when you have these these uh, false you know pastors and teachers telling you that that you're not going to face judgment for sin, you're pretty much leading them straight into the slaughter, man. All right, so I'm going to read that again, verse 5, Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 5. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle of the, in the, in the, battle in the day of the Lord. Okay, so you're not preparing the minds of the people for what's coming. Verse 6, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, the Lord saith and the Lord hath not sent them and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word so that you know by them pretending that that they are the men that the Lord has sent they're really keeping those people away from the true men that the Lord has sent okay the true men of the Lord that the prophets have always came to warn about uh, impending doom chaos and destruction matter of fact let's go ahead and get that right quick I'm gonna open up another tab it tells you exactly what the prophets have always done. Go to Jeremiah chapter 28 and 8. In the KJV. <clears throat> and it says. Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says. The prophets that have been before me. And before thee of old. Prophesied both against many countries. And against great kingdoms. Of war. And of evil. And of pestilence. Okay. So. That's what the, the so if you have a, you have a prophet telling you he's he's speaking sweet nothings in your ear, then you know he's a false prophet off top, okay? Because all the all the the different uh, uh, chapters in the Bible you can go to Jeremiah chapter eight, Ezekiel chapter thirteen, um, what's another one? Uh, Jeremiah six, Jeremiah fourteen, uh, Micah chapter three. These are all chapters on false prophets, and they all talk about how um, how these false prophets cause the people to err. By promising them peace when there is no peace. Okay. So let's go back to uh where were we? Ezekiel chapter 13. Let's go back there. And I'm gonna I'm gonna this is a good chapter to read on your own, but I'm just gonna read the parts that are relevant to this exact video. So I'm actually gonna scroll, let's go to uh verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold I am against you, saith the Lord. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace. You see that? And one built up a wall and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Okay, so they built up a false sense of security. And the others they fed into that nonsense. That's pretty much what it's saying. I'm going to just scroll on down to the bottom because uh, just for sake of time. Okay, let's see. 
Uh, I'm going to scroll down to, let's go to verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 19. It says, And will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread? So barley and bread represent sustenance. Okay, so he's saying you're polluting the people, the holy people, for sustenance. You're polluting the holy people for money, for material goods. It says to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Okay, so you're pretty, once again, you're not telling the people, you're not preparing them for the battle of the day of the Lord. You're pretty much leading them to the slaughter. Okay, and the Lord's going to judge you for that. I'm going to scroll on down to verse 22. This is, the, this is the, the crux of it right here. It says, Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. Because it, it irritates us, it vexes us. When, when, when the, the real men of the Lord, we bring out the truth of the Bible, and you know the people, they don't want to hear it because all their life, they've been you know told all these lies from these, uh, these false church pastors, man. That's not bringing out the 100% truth according to the Bible. You know, they're speaking according to their own heart. They're bringing out what feels good to the people. It says, And strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. So you, you see, that's exactly what that pastor did. He said, Well, sin is not going to lead you into God's wrath. Sin is not going to lead you into hell. Okay, that's not what the scriptures say, and we're going to get that. We're going to get that in the next few verses I'm going to bring up. But see, once again, man, this is all part of the... The false doctrine of Esau, these these uh these these false pastors, man, they're set up by the devil himself, Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man, who runs the system, who runs the government, and his main MO is to keep you children of Israel, the chosen nation, which consists of so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians. His whole MO is to keep you away from the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, because, you know, I, I went into this uh, earlier with some people that I was uh, speaking with, that... The whole reason why the nation of Israel got judged in the first place, harshly, is because they disobeyed the Heavenly Father, okay? And the law said the commandments that he set up. He said, if you obey these, you're going to receive blessings. If you don't, you receive curses. And as we know, uh, the children of Israel did not obey, all right? So I'm going to read that one verse once again. I'm going to move on. Ezekiel 13 and 22. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad. And strengthen the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. All right. So, I mean, it's just, <clears throat> it's, it's very foul, really, you know. But these people, they paid off, so they don't care, man. They got that 501c3 charter. It's all good. You know, as long as they get that tax money, that uh, not that tax money, the tithe money. They driving around that new Cadillac, got that three-piece suit on. You know, and it's all good. They don't care where, they don't care where you end up at. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And the itching ears represents they're going to heap to themselves teachers that make them feel good. They're not going to, they don't care to hear the 100% truth of the Bible, man. Okay? And that's what, you, that's what you're going to need to hear because, you know, you're going to need to know what's going to happen in the end times. It tells us Isaiah 33 and 6 that, this knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of thy times. That's Isaiah 33 and 6. Without the, without the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and you don't know what's going on, you don't understand the prophecies, you're going to be left out in the dust. And, as, and um, you know, as we just read, man, the people, they don't want to endure sound doctrine. If you go on this, if you go on the dude's page, and, you know, he's in this video where he's talking false doctrine, he got 4,000 plus likes, you know, 1,200 something shares, all in a matter of a couple of days. And he's speaking a bunch of nonsense, but if you have people that are speaking the truth, even though it's harsh, don't nobody want to hear that, man. And this is common of our people. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 30. Okay, this is this is nothing new, man. Uh, reincarnation is real, and that, that includes uh, people and kingdoms. And the same way that the, the children of Israel were rebellious back then, they do the same thing now. They don't want to hear the true words of the Lord. They don't want to accept it. And accept the words that are able to save their soul from damnation. Listen to this. This is, uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Hang on. Uh, oh, yep, yeah, here it is. Isaiah chapter 30. All right. Let's see to this. We're going to start at verse 9. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, Okay, so you tell them, hey, man, 
you know, the Lord requires things of us. The Lord tells us, hey, we can't be uh, eating abominable food, can't be worshiping idols, can't celebrate the customs of the heathens that don't have anything to do with the Lord, Christmas, Halloween, Easter. These are all pagan customs, right? Uh, can't be lying, stealing, you know, can't be, be a homosexual, right? If you, you know, if you have tattoos, well, we ain't supposed to get them. After you know the truth, you don't get no more. It's simple as that, man, but... Once again, so you go to that church, they're going to tell you, come as you are, stay as you are, do what you want to do. The Lord still love you. When that's the, even then, that's not true because it tells you the Lord hated sinners. In Psalms 5 and 5, the Lord hates the workers of iniquity. All right? So, you know, they're not going to tell you that you make yourself an enemy of the Lord when you willfully disobey. And the Lord will kill you. Make no mistake. All right? So uh, here we are, Isaiah 30, and verse 9, that this is rebellious people, lying children, Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. This is what they say. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, prophesy not. Unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. So they want you to lie to them. They want you to tell you. That's why they, That's why these false These false uh, prophets, they got so many likes and everybody loves them, man, you know. <clears throat> because, you know, they, once again, they're speaking things that, that make the people feel good. But it's not the truth. And the truth is what's going to set you free. Listen, it says, verse 11, Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us, because the, uh, the, the, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, He speaks through the men that He has set up to be teachers and to be prophets. All right? It tells you in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, I believe, that He will give you pastors according to His word and according to His will, he, what He wants you to know, what He wants to teach you. But, you know, the people, they say, nah, we don't want to hear that, man. We want to hear about riches and all that kind of stuff. And here's the thing. All that is going to come, but it's not going to be on this side, man. This this world is ruled by the devil. It's ruled by Esau, Edom. You know, the kingdom the kingdom for the, for the uh, children of Israel is going to be coming soon after the Lord takes this devil down, which we see is getting ready to happen, man. So we just got to remain faithful, you know, do our best to, to uh, get right, prepare ourselves for the battle of the Lord. And Lord willing, we be accounted uh, worthy to make it through unscathed. All right, we're going to move to, um, let's go to James in ch chapter 2. Let's go there now. All right. James chapter 2, verse, start at verse 17. It says, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by thy works. Okay, and, and part of part of the works is keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Because what, what they said in the video, he said, well, he said, if uh, if a Muslim or something keeps the laws, statutes, and commandments, then he he's still going to, you know, face wrath. And that is true because, you know, um, according to the scriptures, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, he is the way, the truth, and the life. So you have to go through him. But that doesn't mean completely disregard works. That doesn't mean completely disregard obedience to the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, because once again, if you do, man, that's going to lead to your destruction. Uh, so I'm going to just, I'm going to skip to the point. James chapter 2, verse 24. It says, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And that's, talk, that's referencing a biblical story. <clears throat> that's, that's another video. Let's go to the Apocrypha now. Second Ezra's chapter 9. Okay. <clears throat> Second Ezra chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse 5. And, uh, if, you know, if, if this video, I know I'm moving kind of fast. If you're watching the video, you know, you can pause, take notes, open up, and you can read along with me. Second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 5. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. So that means the wrath of the Lord is near. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and ending in effects and signs. And listen to this. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape, escape what? 
the wrath of the Heavenly Father, man, when he comes and makes the land desolate, okay? It's going to be, once again, man, famine, war, destruction, diseases out here, you know, the nuclear missiles, all kind of curses are going to hit this place. It says, and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith where ye, whereby ye have believed. Okay, once again, man, faith and works and, once, uh, the you know, part of the works is keeping the law, as the commandments. It says that this person shall be preserved from the said perils. That's, that's what it means to be saved. Okay. To be saved means be preserved from the Lord's wrath and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Okay. When it's talking about the land and the borders, a lot of times when, it, uh, when, it's, when it's speaking of, it says Jerusalem, it's not talking about the actual city. It's talking about the people. Okay. You can find that in Second Chronicles 6 and 6. Israel and Jerusalem are a people before it's a place. Okay, so it says that those that shall see the salvation shall see it within his land and within his borders because he sanctified them from the beginning. They were chosen for this. They were chosen to receive salvation. Verse 9. Now, this is going to be for the others. This is going to be for the wicked that follow after guys like, like what's his name? Let's see what that dude's name is. Apostle, I know, prophet Brian Corn, False prophet Brian Corn. This is going to be what happens to people who follow people like him. It says, then shall they, verse 9, then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. You're going you're gonna to go through pure hell, man. You're going to face the wrath of the Heavenly Father. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And they that have loathed my law, you hated the laws of the, of the Heavenly Father, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, they understood it not, but despised it. So we're in the time of grace right now. The Lord is allowing you to repent. He's giving you an opportunity, you know, to uh, to get right. But you say, no, nah, I ain't going to do that. And I ain't going to do that because because uh, Apostle, a uh, uh, pro uh, false prophet, Brian Karn, told me sin's not going to sin is going to uh, not going to destroy me. I can, I can just keep being a wicked ass nigga and the Lord going to save me. Right. That's what that's what he's telling you. But that's not what the scriptures say. And it says, listen to this, verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. So you disobey the Heavenly Father, he's going to kill you. Okay, this ain't no joke, man. The Heavenly Father is going to kill you painfully. Verse 13. Actually, no, that doesn't apply to this. Uh, well, okay. Yeah, well, I'll read it. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is. And for whom the world is created. Lord willing, we are of that number. Got a few more scriptures. I'm going to wrap it up. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22. Let's go there. And verse 14. It's going to tell you who's going to. This is tell right. Actually, I'm going to view the whole chapter. I might start a little bit early. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to start at 12. All right. I'm going to start at 12. And this is going to tell you who is going to receive eternal life. All right. This is going to tell you who is going to be blessed and who's going to be uh, allowed to enter into the gates of the city right here. Check this out. This is uh, Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Now, what works don't matter, brother. Works don't matter. You just got to have faith, brother. Right. You could do it now. Sin ain't going to send you to hell, brother. Okay. And behold, I come quickly, and my, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Okay. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make it a lie. <laughs> so that, that that applies to this guy. You loveth and you make it lies. You are your telling Brian Corn. You're not gonna you're not gonna have entrance into the the, the gates of the city, man. Okay. <clears throat> I'm uh bring out a few more scriptures. Let's go to Matthew chapter 19. Okay, let's see. Matthew chapter 19, 
And I'm going to start at verse 16, okay? And this is uh, someone asking Yahweh himself. He said, what do I have to do to achieve eternal life, to be saved? It says, verse 16, and behold, and once again, I'm in Matthew chapter 19. It says, and behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is, the heavenly Father. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. There you go. Keep the commandments. If you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. Don't break the law. That's it. Point blank period. He saith unto him, Which? Yahweh said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Those are all laws. Those are all part of the Ten Commandments. He said, if you want to enter into eternal life, you got to keep these commandments. You know, I don't know where these people get off, man, talking about it's not necessary to keep the commandments. I mean, he'd make it very plain. All right. I got two more scripts and I'm going to wrap it up. First Peter chapter 4. Let's go there. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to start at verse 17. All right. It says, for the First Peter chapter 4, verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, as with the Israelites. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? So if you don't obey the gospel, you really, you really going to be done out here, man. You through. Verse 18, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, you see that? If the righteous scarcely, that means, let's get the definition for scarcely. So there's no confusion. Okay. If the righteous scarcely be saved, let's look that up. Definition, it says only just, almost, hardly, rarely. Okay. By a narrow margin. You see that? So by a very narrow margin, you barely going to make it. Even the righteous are barely going to make it. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? But sin, but, but it's all good. You can sin as much as you want to because the work of the Lord is already finished. Right? We're going we to get that next. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So he's telling you, if you're going to suffer for righteousness sake, if you want to walk this path, you got you to stay focused. It says, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing. You got to keep on fighting that good fight of faith, man. You, you, can't, you can't backslide. I mean, we all going to make mistakes, but, matter of, it, 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 you know, there's, you know, you know when you're abusing. You know if you're abusing the, the Lord's grace. And he knows. And if you are, he's going to destroy you. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. And I'm going to wrap it up with this. All right. This, this, is the, this is the final and cold cut to all that false doctrine, man. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. It says, For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So what happens if there's no more sacrifice? That means that now you are ripe for the Lord's judgment. Because here's the thing. Hebrews, if we read Hebrews 9 and 22, it tells us that no sin is forgiven unless blood has been shed. So if you have no covering of blood, then your sins are not forgiven and you're going to face the wrath of the Heavenly Father. If we, I'm going to open up another tab real quick. I'm just going to read you this, Romans, 9 and, Romans 5 and 9. It tells you that the blood is what saves us from the wrath of the Father. That's the whole point of the Lord shedding His blood. People don't, they don't really understand what the point, what that really meant when it says covered by the blood. Romans chapter 5 verse 9, it says, Much more than... Being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. That's what it means to be saved. You're saved from the Heavenly Father's wrath. Okay, that's Romans 5 and 9. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10, though. I'm going to read that again, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law, 
He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye should he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Okay? So there you go. So it says, I'm going to read that again. <clears throat> says of how much sore punishment suppose ye be suppose he so it's like it, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trod under the foot the son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know that him that saith vengeance belongeth unto me I will recompense saith the Lord and again the Lord shall judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So there you go. Uh, that tells you right there, man. The Lord, the Lord really ain't playing around. Um, but really, that's that's all I got, man, uh, to break down this this false doctrine. Lord willing, it was edifying to the elect, wherever you may be scattered across the four corners of the earth. With that being said, all praise, honor, and glory to the heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Shalom.